Good evening. So, tonight I wanted to talk to you about the Stardust Ranch. And where do I begin talking about the Stardust Ranch? Some of you are probably familiar. Um, some of you aren't familiar. Some of you maybe kind of heard of it. It's a subject I've been looking into a long time, and it's very controversial, more so than even the Skinwalker Ranch, where the Skinwalker Ranch had a lot of interest and uh, scientific documentation and stories and history. The Stardust Ranch seems to kind of have a lot less evidence or support. Now, I'm going to tell you guys right now, um, I don't think this is all BS. I don't think that it's all true. And there could be some of it true, some of it not. It could all be fake. I'm going to remain completely neutral on this one. Think of this simply as a reporting video. I report, you decide kind of a deal. Um, but it's very fascinating. If it's a tall tale, it's one hell of a tall tale. If it's all true, then the implications are pretty mind-blowing. So to give you a little background, what you see there is John Edmonds. And uh, he bought this ranch some years back with him and his wife. And they uh, wanted to make a rescue for horses, which is very cool. And I guess they also had programs for uh, underprivileged or special needs or therapy type horse program there. They'd rescue the horses, and which is very supportive. Horse therapy is very cool. Um, so there's been a lot of stuff reported over the years. I guess he's uh, recently tried to sell the ranch, and uh, I guess it did sold sometime last year, and originally it was going for $1 million, which was, it's a large ranch with a couple houses on it and property and everything else, so that doesn't seem too unreasonable, but when all the fantastical stories that we're going to talk about came out of this place, he started asking for $5 million, and a lot of people, this was kind of a red flag, some kind of a marketing thing, so... To me, there's a lot going on here, and um, if, I think we should just dive into it and start getting to the good stuff of what you want to talk about. So here we go, folks. So John Edsman and his wife bought the house some years back, the property, and it's a nice house with a big pool and guest house and ranch and horse facilities. And uh, one of the things that he said was, well, I think I knew something was up when the first day we moved in. And all the old furniture in the house ended up in the pool mysteriously. Now, uh, to me, that kind of sparks a little bit from the Skinwalker Ranch stories about the poltergeist activity and uh, some of the real high strangeness there. And I guess they have had a share of poltergeist activity, lights in the skies, um, different things moving around. Um, some cryptid activity, although my, primarily what he talks about is, uh, and what's been reported, is mostly UFO alien type stuff. Uh, so we don't really talk about aliens a lot on this channel. Uh, we hit on it here and there. Uh, this is more of a cryptid and strange location and strange story kind of a channel, and that's where I keep it. But this is kind of one of those things I wanted to talk about. Now, I guess they have reported very early on, um, and the neighbors as well, I guess, in the area of UFOs and different alien activity going on there. And uh, there's a lot of stuff that gets associated with aliens and uh, UFO type activity. And one of those things seems to be horse, cow, or what's known as animal mutilations. Now, animal mutilations, if you even take the UFO factors out of it, are quite fascinating because it's well documented with law enforcement and ranchers and no BS kind of people who wouldn't make this stuff up where animals end up dead, emaciated, or surgically removed, uh, no signs of predators, no footprints, just strange stuff. If you, I'll probably do a whole video on uh, animal mutilation at some point because it's just absolutely fascinating some of the circumstances that happens and there's a lot of theories out there that aliens are doing it and they're doing it for food or they're doing it for research purposes so or it's the government or some people bigfoot claim uh, they claim bigfoot and other cryptids are doing it there's a lot of theories on animal mutilation i'll have to do a video on it sometime but they experience some of that on the property which anybody who owns livestock knows that that's uh very detrimental because your livestock cost you money and they're worth something now, he flat out says when he was interviewing that there are two portals, because I guess it's a larger property. You get one in the front and one in the back. And that um, creatures, aliens, ships, orbs, all that kind of stuff periodically come through these portals. Now, this sounds a lot like Skinwalker Ranch and other places and spots in the Sierras and Dulce, New Mexico and Area 51 and a lot of places that are associated with high strangeness. 
Now, he claims that gray aliens specifically come through these portals all the time. He claims that they've gone inside his house, they go around the property, and they are mean. They are not nice. They're causing havoc. They're doing mean stuff. They're pranking things. They're basically like little demons. Now, the next couple of pictures you're seeing here are supposed pictures taken from an investigator who went out there and uh, snap pictures of these aliens, I guess. Um, they look like your typical gray aliens with the big black eyes and small mouth and the uh, kind of bulbous looking head. Uh, these pictures, you know, of course they're kind of blurry because that's just, uh, you know, the way things are in the paranormal world. It's kind of the big joke, actually, is that, oh, maybe Bigfoot's blurry. Well, kind of the same thing with gray aliens, I guess. And if I'm going to be completely honest, these pictures could be real. They could be complete hoax. To me, they look a lot like forced perspective. Like if you took a little alien doll, a little five or six inch doll, and held it right up to the camera, and uh, the background in focus, your front would be out of focus, and you would kind of get this effect. Uh, but like I said, we're going to remain neutral on this. It could be forced perspective. It could be a real, it could be a real uh, creature that is unidentified that's gone in front here. So. That also brings me to a lot of claims that, uh, you know, oh, this is all fake and he all did it. And then there's other people saying, no, 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 it's real. Like I said, I'm going to leave that up to you guys to decide. So don't take this as, oh, Matt Squatch thinks it's a real place and you're wrong. Because um, I get that kind of stuff a lot in the comments when people don't realize this, this channel's for reporting. And I may give my thoughts, but it's up to you to decide. So along with these aliens being spotted, the wife has uh, a lot of stories of the aliens entering the house visiting her in bed, levitating her off the bed and moving her around, kind of your classic abduction type stories, which I find fascinating. And she also talks about um, some of the more lurid things that these aliens have done to her and her body and uh, some of the experiments that they've done. Uh, I don't know what to make of that. I mean, it seems pretty classic uh, alien abduction stuff. So if they cooked it all up, for to get publicity to sell the ranch i mean that would kind of somebody maybe it might be kind of cool to live on a haunted supposedly alien infested ranch uh, then you cross the line to where well that doesn't sound appetizing at all so i don't know why they would make it up for marketing because it seems like not a good marketing plan uh and why would you make up something like that uh it's kind of the old joke oh you know aliens and they're probing but you know there's a lot of people out there who've had a lot of abductions and for them it's no joke and some of them, I actually believe, uh, an extra-dimensional or extraterrestrial creature would be interested in, you know, human race and how we're designed and built and doing experiments, just kind of like when we go into the woods and observe uh, different animals, we would maybe shoot one or two for a specimen and study them and tranquilize them and take, and, uh, you know, take samples and stuff like that from them and take blood samples and weigh them. I mean, if it extra extraterrestrial extra dimensional race saw us um they would probably want to do the same thing so anyway that was kind of a digression there so let's move on to some of the more outrageous claims so this dude john um he states that he keeps samurai swords all over the house and all over the property uh because he's killed a number of them the first interview I heard said he killed 18 of them and he's uh the last one I saw said he's killed 19 of these aliens and wounded many, many, many of them. Uh, a samurai sword, um, to be quite honest, I own a samurai sword. It's, uh, it's not a cheap a, um, stainless steel display one. It's a real dual-tempered, traditionally built katana. It was very expensive. It was a gift a few years ago. And it's basically a three-foot razor with a stiff backbone on it. And uh, they are no joke. And uh, to be honest, if you're talking about an unarmored opponent, um, flesh and blood type creature, it would be a very devastating weapon. Now, the curious thing a lot of you guys are wondering, um, like the picture you see in the background, is I guess the bodies disappear or vaporize, uh, but blood and chunks and stuff um, are still left behind. And John himself has claimed that he wakes up with weird scars and weird cuts on him, or, you know, there wasn't anything before, and yet he'll have a wound that looks like it's healed six months or a few months or a few days or a few years. Uh, you know, like some kind of time lapse, some kind of time travel type thing. So I find that very fascinating. Uh, 
you know, he's walking around with samurai swords, and he's not like a, you know, built like a ninja or anything like that. So I find it very fascinating. He's claiming he's killing him with a samurai sword. I guess, you know, you can't, well, why don't you just shoot him? Well, guns are very noisy, and if you're in city limits, you can't discharge guns in city limits. I guess you're in Arizona, I guess you could own a suppressor or something, but uh, swords are pretty cheap, especially if you keep them stashed around. Now, I don't know what to make of that. I guess anything is possible. Uh, I guess it would be a quick, quiet way of dispatching aliens if there are a flesh and blood type creature. The, the whole sword thing and the body disappearing seems a, like another little red flag to me. Like, well, that's a little bit of a convenient out. Not to necessarily say that he's wrong or right, but um, the fact that, oh, yeah, it, it seems almost like a video game. You ever play one of like the, the old classic video games from the 90s where you shoot a bunch of bad guys in a video game and, you know, the body's there for a minute and then they flash and slowly dissolve and disappear. So that's kind of a quick rundown I guess the ranch um, sold last year. They went from $1 million to $5 million, which was kind of a red flag to me that maybe it was a marketing ploy. Although, I think if you went with the incense and crystals and portal to a peaceful dimension ploy, you'd probably sell it better. Um, please leave me your thoughts in the comments. Let's be a little bit more constructive than fake, 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 and thumbs down. Um, give me your honest opinion. There's a number of videos I saw online that say... Uh, this was all fake, and other ones say, well, this was real, and other people are convinced, and people who have visited there had weird weird encounters, and other people who have gone there said nothing happened at all. And there's other parts of the story. I wanted to make a quick video, because that's what we do on this channel. I wanted to make an under 15-minute video, because there's plenty of long podcast-style interviews and big, long explanations, but I wanted to make kind of a quick synopsis video for you guys. And that's what we got here today. If you feel I deserve it, please give this video a thumbs up and please hit subscribe. And if you haven't already, ring the little bell notification when you hit subscribe. And uh, stay safe in the woods out there, folks. It's a big, strange world we live in. And uh, sometimes truth is stranger than fiction. Have a good night, folks.